Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Some of you have been waiting all afternoon and evening to find out what happened today. So, as promised, I will be explaining to everyone what happened, um, both in the hearing and definitely something odd that happened after the hearing. So, don't worry guys. Um, you will know everything in a few minutes. Um, I will say this. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's, it is what it is. But tonight, I will be sleeping much calmer and waking up tomorrow a heck of a lot calmer simply because that red and everything is over it's it's done and that's probably the good thing because that was stressing us out big time i will say that you know i was angry when this all first started and everything i am a little bit you know angry but i also have enough common sense to know that um, I knew someday he was going to sell the property just by the way he talked. I didn't see it coming now, but, um, I don't know, you know, I guess this door is meant to be closing and something else is meant to be opened, you know, um, I used to like this saying, and I seen it on a keychain, and I used to have it on a t-shirt as well. And it said, life isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. And you know what? That That is actually true. Because you can find the good, even in the weirdest situations. And you can often look back on things and realize that what seemed to be the absolute worst thing that could happen to you when you look at it months down the road actually turned out to be a big blessing now last night i listened to a clip a voicemail clip that the attorney had sent me around 6 p.m whatever was going on with my phone yesterday I didn't even get notified I had a voicemail until like 10.38 last night. And oddly enough, whatever number she called me from was blocked on my phone because it was a hidden unknown number. So that's probably why my phone didn't ring. I didn't know she was calling me. Anyway, she had said she was concerned because the legality of it is that we would have been we should have been given a 15-day notice to quit. In terms of the magistrate, it isn't going to matter to him if it was 10 or 15. So, pretty much she was saying that we would get 10 days. In that 10-day time period, we would have the option to appeal. Now, by appealing, you give yourself an extra two weeks for a total of 21 days, but, big but, appealing requires taking it to the next level, which is the uh, county court in Wolfsbear. A, a filing fee has to be paid, and depending on your income, either a month's rent goes in escrow, or if you're low income, a third of the rent. Well, a third of the rent for me would be $200. If you were going with, say, the full price, I would go with the 600 because we have no paperwork stating that the rent was going to be increased to nine. And basically, that would go into the escrow, and you would have a hearing up in that court, and we'll spare. Um, but the bottom line is, in the end, the legality of it is, it's his property. And so, today, technically, the property was returned to him. And 
we have 10 days with the option of appealing in those 10 days, but it costs money. Now, oddly enough, I thought that my neighbors understood that, but when we got outside, something really weird happened. And before I even get into that, suffice to say that they, when, when the magistrate told the other people that, yeah, you get 21 days, I said to them, you only get the 21 days if you file the appeal. No matter what was said outside of that courtroom, there is not that in writing and paper. The only paper that matters is the paper that we walked out of that courtroom with. Anybody could say anything after that point, but if it isn't in writing, it is not legal. Now, interestingly enough, the magistrate did ask Alex if he owned the property and it finally came out that it was him and his sister. Again, never says her name. This woman has no name. He never mentions her name. And the magistrate asked him for the deed because in situations like this, you have to prove that you have the right to be evicting people. And he said he didn't have it. So the magistrate was a little curious about that and said, when did you buy the property? And he said, March 1st. And he said, is your name on the deed? He hesitated for a brief moment. And he said, yes, mine and my sister's. Which I, I, I didn't hear back from my lawyer this afternoon, but I probably will tomorrow. Which makes me curious because I would think that both their names, if both their names are actually legitimately on a deed. Why has he always been here himself? Why is his name on everything? And why would she not have been at that hearing? So, I mean, maybe he has the property in someone else's name for tax reasons, so he pays less of a tax bill by having his properties and other family members' names, but he technically owns them. But that's not illegal. It is ripping off the tax system, but it's not illegal. But then, too, I'm wondering, could there be something shady in his past or her past? And perhaps that is why he doesn't state his sister's name or who, you know, she is, what her, what her involvement is in everything. I, I don't know. It does make you question things though. Interesting. Um, yesterday afternoon, I got a call from a reporter from our local newspaper, a standard speaker. And it was in response to a general, not a letter to the editor, but just like an opinion. And I was asking, why is nobody saying anything about the eviction moratorium? It's going to affect everyone everywhere. Why is nobody talking about it? And I got a call back yesterday afternoon when Ronnie and I were up. So I was explaining to him what the eviction moratorium does not cover the types of evictions. And he said that he had been on an online seminar for two days. He was working on an article about it. And he said, you have just given me a very fresh perspective on this because not once was our type of situation covered. Everything was focused on people not being able to pay their rent and all the help that's available out there is for utilities and helping people get caught up on their rent but there is nothing really out there for people who are priced out of their apartments or people who you know have to move because the property sells and so i mean it, when a thing is said and done an eviction is still an eviction and no matter what the causes are if it's not to do with anything criminal or, um, you know, like threatening other people's safety, anything like that, vandalism, destruction. I personally think that all evictions should have been stopped because look at what is going on in the world right now. 
in my state alone, the numbers are going crazy. <clears throat> so I feel it's still wrong to evict people during a pandemic, but for people that legitimately do owe money, there are also a group of crappy people who can well afford to pay their rent throughout the whole pandemic and took advantage of the moratorium and basically um, didn't pay it when they could afford to do it. And that makes it bad for folks that were struggling that, you know, were trying. So today I got notified in Luzerne County, um, apartments and houses for rent about scammers. I said already no from the Scranton group. So now people really have to be careful and really need to um, be vigilant with their money because I've just come to a conclusion there's too many scammers around and no, if Ronnie and I, you know, down the road um, need to transfer money, it's got to be done in person. I want to see the person. I want to do my own background check on them because if they have the right to do it on you the way the world is nowadays, I can get a membership for Intellius or been verified for like under $40 for a year. And you could run background checks on anyone. Might not be a bad idea to invest in that kind of an app on my laptop for a year because you don't know anything about the person you're renting from. You don't know. They could have been in jail. They could have been, you know, in jail for being a pedophile 15, 20 years ago. You don't know. They could have been a murderer again. You don't know. They could have lost properties years ago that were foreclosed on or something. They may have a crappy credit score. And then you've got to wonder, well, is there going to be a day I wake up and my water is turned off or, you know, the sewer bill wasn't paid, whatever. So I think actually if people are smart, they should actually do a little digging into um, potential landlords and that too. Because if people really... So the way the hearing went was Jeff was already there when Judith and I got there. Jeff and I actually were scheduled together. Judith was scheduled after us. But we were outside talking and Alex apparently wanted to talk to us. I didn't pay attention at first. I went to go sit down in her car and she said, Alex wants to talk to us. And I said, who cares? And then I thought, okay, what does he want to talk to us about? So I said, okay, yeah, let's go see what he wants. Now, interestingly enough, I didn't think about this at the time, but I think that the constable that was there during the hearing came outside to just see what was going on because it's not very often a landlord is going to be outside talking to the tenants that he all yeah. took to court and i think maybe you know in hindsight i thought about this when i got back that the constable went outside to see what was going on because that's just not something you see and i think he also wanted to be sure that there wasn't going to be like a fist fight or anything too so definitely off the bat, this guy is shady. And he basically said to the three of us that he would prorate our security deposits, meaning if we needed longer than 10 days, 21 days would be the maximum. And he would give us, I guess, whatever is left, which would be nothing if you think about it. Maybe, what, $50? So that's still kind of grimy. Mm -hmm. But what was really interesting is, one, he did not bring this up in the courtroom. He waited till we all filed out. I think the reason he thought about this and wanted to talk to us outside of the courtroom is because this is possibly his plan. You don't automatically get the 21 days. I had to clarify that with the neighbors. No, 
you will get the extended time if you file the appeal. It says right in our paperwork what to do. And the lawyer told me even if I wanted to go that route, she would help me do it. But it involves spending money and I don't see the sense of paying hundreds of dollars just to get two more weeks time. You could take that money and maybe possibly mm -hmm. put it towards moving or going to a new place. Why would you do that? Uh, that makes no sense to me. So, mm -hmm. no, that's that's not our plan. But he doesn't need to know that. So, he, you know, it, it's like literally up in the air. He doesn't know well, who's going to be out in 10 days, who's going to appeal, who's doing what. He doesn't know. So, I said to my neighbor, Judith, I said, well, that is very shady. I said, and if you trust him, oh no. She said, no, I don't. I said, number one, he had anything to say to us, he could say it in a courtroom. The reason that he chose to talk to us afterwards is simply this. If you have not filed an appeal and you're here on the 11th day, your stuff can be thrown out, the locks can be changed, and you can be arrested for trespassing. Okay? And the attorney told me that, unless you file the proper paperwork. He comes off, Alex says, oh, you don't have to file the paperwork. I will give you the extra time, but I'm going to prorate your security deposit. So in other words, saying the longer you stay, less you get back. But there's no proof we had that conversation. I didn't even think about recording it. My phone was off. All our phones were off because... We were in the courtroom. So there's no proof. And when it comes to anything legal, it's always best to have everything in writing. So I said to my neighbor, you have no proof. What proof do we have that he had that conversation? We were all there. We heard it. We know it. But do we have proof? No. Why? Because there's nothing on paper stating that. He could turn around and say, I never talked to you after the hearing. I left. You are all crazy. Bunch of liars. And anybody here after that 10th day technically would be screwed. Would be screwed. And I stressed that to her. I said, you only get the 21 days if you go to Wolfsbear. Read over the papers I said to her we got from the magistrate. You've got to go to Will's Fair. You have got to, the day when I got back home, and the person said to me, you know what? I wonder how many people he pulled that crap on and screwed them over by telling them that. And they thought, oh, well, I don't have 21 days, whatever. And then wind up getting tossed down on the street, the locks changed and losing all their belongings because, you know, they trusted him. I don't trust him. I don't either. So why would anybody here be stupid enough to believe that he'll give you the extra time? Well, why didn't he tell a magistrate that? And the thing is, this guy's from Massachusetts, and he clearly does not know how Pennsylvania is because... But now his sister right. would. If his sister truly lives in oh, Hazleton, yeah, as he one. says... Well, I already touched on that in another clip. Huh. But... His sister would, because she supposedly lives here in Hazleton on Alter Street. So his sister would know if she, in fact, is a property owner yeah. here in PA. She would know that. I still find it very bizarre that she's going to make her brother travel from Massachusetts to manage a property when she could do it herself or hire someone to do it local. So I don't know. So, bottom line is, if everybody is smart, they will get the hell out of Dodge and say adios and move on. Do I feel there's something shady with this property and the sale? Yes. Do I feel that something is going to go down here, down the road? Most definitely. And when I got back, I took a snooze with Oreo for a bit, snuggled with him. And you know the thought crossed my mind that, you know, okay... We knew we weren't going to be able to live here forever, and we knew someday we were going to have to move. We didn't expect it to be now, but we knew the day was going to come. And 
maybe there's a really good reason why the universe just doesn't want us here. And maybe in a year from now, I will be doing a video about this situation a year later, and we'll be able to sit there and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. In hindsight, it turned out to be the blessing that in disguise that we never, you know, expected or the old landlord had ever gotten some sort of help. Because for all we know, he could have said nobody was paying him rent. And, um, you know, he could very easily have gotten all kind of mortgage assistance and who knows what. And the only way I might even have a suspicion if he did do something like that is because they were investigating some of the help that landlords were getting and found out that some of them filed for everything like that, never told their tenants they were, were collecting rent, but then put on paperwork that nobody was paying rent. And I would so laugh down the road if that would ever come out because I could see him doing it because with him, it was about the money. He knew probably as far back as last summer that he was going to be selling the property in the fall. And rather than give us a heads up because he knew everybody would move and he wouldn't be getting over two grand a month. It was all about the money. And a good thing too is um, Pennsylvania, middle of April, is going to everyone, all the adults, can be el will be eligible for the vaccine, which is just around the corner. Which means by the time that I would be getting ready for my second, Ronnie would be eligible for okay. his first. And also, he's working a certain amount of time at American Eagle. He would probably be eligible for it because them and Amazon employees and the different factories and things were considered essential workers. And so, therefore, they also are eligible for it, I believe, because of that as well. So, that is a good thing. So, is there going to be good come out of this? I do think yes. And may not seem like it at first, but as I said, in hindsight, maybe next year, end of March, March 31st, 2022, I'll be doing a video with Ronnie and we could turn around and say, you know, like looking Look back I mean. at that video and everything that transpired may have actually been like <laughs> the best thing in years that could possibly happen. I mean, like I'm really trying to look at it this way. Um, if we're meant to leave the state, things are just going to work out and it's going to work out that way first. If we're meant to stay in PA, things are going to work out. We stay here. Definitely, I want to say by this weekend, we're going to know what our next step is going to be and where we're going to be. It's not just going to be a A to B kind of thing. It's probably going to be in steps. A, mm -hmm. B, C. It's going to be steps. Um... But either way, I mean, I'm thinking that this is meant to happen and Lord knows what's going to go on with this property. See, I didn't even know that. Now I am going to have to go on and yeah. um, maybe I will do a video about yeah. that tomorrow. I'm going to have to print that article up and read it because... Um, that's rather interesting because I gave him a different perspective on the eviction moratorium, um, which I think was important and people needed to know that, that it does not, you know, cover everything. I mean, is it a good thing? Yes, but it needs to be so much more specific. What makes it bad? The language is not specific. It's not clear. It can be open to interpretation so many different ways. And unfortunately, it leaves open the opportunity for people who can afford to pay their rent to take advantage of it. And in those kind of situations, I don't blame landlords for being frustrated. Because if there's three, four adults in a household who get checks, maybe one person works, they're able to pay the rent. And just because they decide, no, oh, I don't feel like it because the government says I don't have to, 
I don't blame any landlord for getting fed up with that nonsense. I really can't. It's there. You have your dad's nose. I know, but I'm like, I never realized that until now. I'm looking like, oh my god, my nose is so, you so much bigger. Than you have yours. the Stemco nose. I have my mom's nose, but you carry, your dad carried the Stemco nose quite well. He was still really cute with that nose. Not to mention, look at the space between your nose and lips. Mine's a lot smaller than yours. That's just the difference in our face structure. I know, but, I'm, I'm, I know, but like, this is I way. have a more oval. Um, the face shape. Yours is it's like blocking. a little... Kind of a block, yeah, but still, it's like, this is the first time I'm noticing all this. It's like, got in where have I been? Got in the video with some humor, guys, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. If you cannot laugh about some things, um, you will go completely... Getting into drag, for me, is, it's, it's, it has a lot of time. This isn't a live stream. It's a video. I know. All right, guys. That's on this day. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell for all so you are notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so, so much for letting us bend your ear. Uh, stay safe, everyone. I know that it's getting really bad again. And um, hopefully, this is the plan. We'll see you all on the next one. The Watson Scott personality test. The scariest personality test on the internet. Bye.